Mining Weekly Online is talking to James Campbell, the new CEO of Rockwell Diamonds. The Rockwell Diamond Company, which is listed in Toronto, is going to go for a capital raising. Could you give us the ins and outs of that? Well, initially at the beginning of the year, the board was targeting a 35.3 million capital raise, which essentially looked at recapitalizing the company, almost like a fresh listing. And in that capital raise was the completion of the Tirasano mine near Fentersdorp, uh, was the upgrade of various technology and plant at Saxondrift, but most importantly, the construction of the Votus Pun mine in the Middle Orange River. Uh, subsequent to uh, the March feelings by the board in terms of raising that, they very wisely decided to actually postpone the capital raising until the new CEO came on board. I started with Rockwell on the 1st of June, and between March and June, there was a significant fall off in, in world markets, now, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere where we raise the bulk of our money and of course where they go into their summer season during July and August. Subsequent to uh, the roadshow, which we're kind of well through at the moment, uh, we've had feedback from many of our investors that they would prefer a smaller capital raising and to look at maybe coming back to the market at a later stage to complete the fundraising of the Voters Pun Mine. So we're looking at targeting about $20 million at the moment and taking Voters Pun Mine in actually two stages or two phases. How do you see uh, the fundamentals of the diamond market at the moment? We're, we're producing around about 12 to 1500 carats per month. And we have a plan to actually upgrade that between two and a half to 5,000 carats per month from organic growth. Uh, the first step would be to complete the Tirasano mine. We plan to actually complete the commissioning of the first two phases by the end of Q3, and then we're reassessing the other two streams to bring it up to 180,000 cubes per month. Once we've completed that, we are looking at developing our operations at Votuspan and then Nuviarskral. And by developing this, we're looking at current technologies. And of course, I've got a weather eye on new technologies. Gem Diamonds, Lucara Diamond Corporation, Petra Diamonds, all deploying new technologies at the moment and the things which I'm keeping very closely abreast of. So my main focus at the moment is to actually improve the efficiencies of our current operations, achieve our carrot uh, throughput in all of them, then build new operations on the new order mining rights which we have at the moment. And only then, when I've got the company into a, a sufficient shape with a value that represents what we believe the value of the company to be, will we actually start to look at acquisitions and mergers. However, that's not saying that if someone brings us a property uh, which we feel has a relatively higher value than building a mine on new VRs, Kral and Votus Pun, we actually won't look at it. But it's not a, a priority for me at the moment. I'm talking about rights. Are all those rights in place uh, at Tirasano? Uh, do you have any delays in the uh, transfer of ownership? We've got one small delay, uh, and that's in the Section 11 transfer of shares from Etruscan, the previous owner, to, to ourselves. And we're working very closely with the DMR in order to actually transfer that ownership. And uh, also with regard to beneficiation, there was a history in this company of doing some sort of arrangement with Steinmetz Group. Mm. Uh, is this going to continue under your leadership? Yes, very, very much so. We've just recently signed a, an extension to the marketing arrangement with the Steinmetz Group. Originally, it was for the plus 10.8 carat stones and above, uh, and it's now for the plus 2.8 carat stones and above. This is a very, very beneficial arrangement, and it's not an offtake arrangement. The Steinmetz Group purchases diamonds at 90% of the market value, and we're not obliged to sell it to them, although we have sold all of our diamonds to them at such a price. Subsequent to the polishing and, and cutting of these diamonds and the sale of the diamonds, they, we, they give us back the additional 10%, plus we share in 50% of the, the uptake uh, from the polishing and cutting. But I think very importantly from a South African perspective as well, is Rockwell beneficiates 80% of its diamonds locally, which is more so than any other diamond company. And this is through the Steinmetz Cutting Factory in downtown Johannesburg. Since the beginning of last year, the prices of our diamonds have risen by something like 50%. Now many of us believe that the diamond market will, will soften a little bit in the future, or, or at best remain horizontal. Now, the diamond market pricing, especially over the last six months, has been almost vertical in terms of the IDEX uh, index, the triple W index and things such as that. And we're seeing that reflected in, into our diamond prices. However, in terms of our own internal forecasts, we're taking a, a more conservative view of about a 3.5% real diamond price growth going forward.
Rockwell has had a bit of a up and down uh, situation. It, it, it really hasn't been in steady state and the, the share price hasn't been uh, anything to write home about lately. What do you think can be done now to turn the company around? There are two fundamental drivers for Rockwell Diamonds at the moment. One is the diamond market, the other one is the new management. You now have James Campbell on board. Um, James is a very experienced uh, CEO. Um, he took African diamonds up the value curve where it was bought by Lucara Diamonds. They developed the AK-6 pipe in Botswana, um, where, for instance, he reduced the capital expenditure required for the plant from $400 million down to $160 million. From about six months ago, uh, the diamond prices started going up in pretty much a, a straight line. Um, and we certainly 50% up on where they were six months ago. What sort of diamonds does Rockwell supply? Rockwell is actually very niche in its supply of world diamonds and we supply small numbers of, of very large, very high quality diamonds. Our last diamond sales tender price averaged at $1,641 per carat. And typically our, our flagship mine, Saxon Drift in the Middle Orange, 80% uh, of the value of the diamonds comes from plus 10 millimeter stones. There we're looking at average diamond prices in excess of $2,000 per carat and average stone sizes over two and a half carats per stone. So our niche is very much in, in small numbers of very large, very high quality diamonds. We've got three major assortments of diamonds. We've got the, the Middle Orange River diamonds from New Kral, Voters Pun, which are two projects, plus Saxon Drift, which uh, at the moment reach an order of $2,000 per carat. We've got the Clip Dam operation near Kimberley, which is about $1,200 per carat. And these come from Paleo channels, uh, which drain the, the hinterland, Lesotho and other areas. The Tirasano mine is a glacial deposit, a glacial sinkholes of diamonds which originated from the northern uh, province of this country and from Botswana. And our average sample price, we yet to sell a parcel of diamonds, is around about $700 per carat. So that market is chiefly aimed at uh, mid to high end engagement rings, whereas Saxon Drift, which produces $2,000 per carat, is aimed mainly at investment stones. We are very, very specific in filling uh, uh, the, the high value diamond segment. So at the moment, we've got a $700 per carat, a $1,200 per carat, and a $2,000 per carat. The Tirasano mine, although it's lower in grade, and one must remember uh, that the average world diamond value is $90 a carat. Uh, so the Tirasano has a higher grade than Saxon Drift and between the three of them we have a, an assortment of diamonds which we feel is sustainable in terms of market demand. That was James Campbell, the new CEO of Rockwell Diamonds, who is going on a capital raising of a reduced kind now at $20 million.